Well, I've got Kara McGregor here, Senior Vice President of Business Development with Independence Title. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today and just kind of talking about what's happening in the title world as we're all evolving to new business practices. Yes, it's interesting times. Yeah, no doubt. Um, well, let's start with kind of the, the easy, the straightforward stuff. With all that's happening, and obviously we're all evolving our business practices, how specifically is title evolving right now? How is the title business evolving? Um, the piece of title that our realtors are most familiar with are our branch locations. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of limitations on what they can do to process the transaction remotely. Um, our business has been deemed essential uh, in terms of all the shutdown orders that are out there. Uh, we do have people in the branch locations uh, processing transactions. Um, we are challenged like so many businesses right now with employees who have children at home and there's limits as to what they can do. We're just rolling with it. Um, the changes that realtors and consumers are going to feel is we're operating by appointment only in the offices. So, um, you need to call in if you, if you need to come by, um, we're asking to limit the number of people at physical closings as much as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. That means allowing the realtor to conference in if they want to be there. Um, asking buyers and sellers to leave kids and extra family members at home if at all possible. Um, and we're offering a whole suite of remote options for closings uh, that uh, we're utilizing so much more now than we ever have before. <laughs> Yeah, so talk a little bit about that. In what cases are remote closing options available? And when do you see that they're sometimes not available? And who gets to make those decisions? There is a, a, a misunderstanding out there a little bit that it's title companies for making those decisions. Um, it's important to understand that title companies are not. Uh, for the health of our employees and, and for the buyers and sellers, we're happy to do everything remotely. Um, there are some transactions that because of lending laws or underwriting requirements uh, require wet signatures. Um, mm -hmm. Home equity loans have to be an in-person closing. It's not our role. It's, it's the federal lending laws. Um, so we have to make some accommodations to get people in the office to close those transactions. Um, there are some lenders who have been able to get registered on remote online notary systems. RON is the, um, yeah. the acronym, uh, but not a lot. Uh, and a lot, of, a lot of that is about the requirements of their underwriters and requirements to sell the loan on the secondary market. There's a lot of underwriters that don't want a remote signature on the promissory note or the deed. Um, mm -hmm. So... We can use remote notaries uh, for those closings. Um, we've, we've developed relationships with some really great remote notary companies and um, they're, they're helping us out. Yeah, yeah. So it's, I, I hear that the headline being, you know, don't blame the title company. You guys are operating in the confines of what the lenders and the, the regulators allow for. So you're doing your best and, I, and it totally makes sense. I know of independence title, especially that you value your relationships with your employees and you want them to be home just as you want the realtors and the clients to be home. So I think we're all kind of working through some of those dynamics. You know, one of the things that strikes me um, as, as really especially difficult about this time is that um, with regards to closings, we were so jammed up with the amount of refinance uh, transactions we were seeing just before the shelter in place and just before the big pandemic changes in our in our market were happening that how far out are you now how long is closing taking how, how much of a jam up are you seeing still you know things are uh, I would say two weeks ago I would have said a 45 day close is really reasonable yeah uh, in, in the past two weeks, things have evolved a lot and, and the wheels are turning more slowly at every phase of the process. Um, yeah. Loan approvals are taking longer because it's taking longer to get verification of employment. It's taking mm -hmm. longer to get credit reports. So that whole process is slowed down. It takes longer for us to get a payoff uh, on an existing loan um, for all the same reasons. Uh, you know, People are understaffed, um, they're working remotely. Um, if there's 
any complications in a closing where we have to get uh, documents from a county office, say there's a divorce or a probate or, or uh, the, the title search process can be slowed down um, because of the difficulty of getting those documents. Um, I don't know what to advise in terms of how much time you build into a contract. 60 days? Uh, it's anybody's guess. Uh, a lot but, of flexibility. I mean, I, I heard the the smart brokers are advising their agents just to give more flexibility than normal and just really stay in communication with your client. But everybody should expect that there needs to be some malleability in the way that these things are moving. Flexibility is the word of the year. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Um, you talked a little bit about employment verification. One of the things that we're hearing is that in some cases, lenders are requiring a re-verification of employment um, at the closing table. Have you seen that or heard of that? And how are you I seeing that happen? To, talk to our head of escrow to get some frontline information about how that's working. Sure. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if that's the case just because people's job situations are in flux. Yeah, yeah. And we'll have, we're going to have some follow ups with lenders as well. So they'll provide some of that information for us. Um, what are you advising or how has your advice changed with regards to wiring money? You know, one of the things that we've been thinking about is how cybersecurity was already important. It's especially important in the title business. You guys have been at, at the front lines of some of the threats as it relates to transactions. But now that everybody is working virtually, we're all zooming all day long. Uh, has that changed the way that you're approaching any of that? At the top level, uh, wire fraud is is still top of mind. Um, yeah. And uh, we are um, renewing our efforts to communicate with buyers and sellers and their realtors about the dangers um, as people have to return to remote options. You know, for a while there was this safe haven about using cashier's checks, you know, old school. Um, we had to explain to some millennials what cashier's checks are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Been a minute. laughs> uh, and yes, you physically go to your bank to get one. Uh, but uh, that option is is limited or, or in some cases not available at all. So um, the most important thing to think about with wire fraud is that um, the most common entry point for a fraudster is through email. Um, so we're just reminding our clients at every phase of the transaction that when the moment comes to, to get wiring instructions, we will not be emailing them to you. You know, um, the, it's a phone call. It's a live phone call with our office. It's a phone call from a number you get off our website. Um, we have seen some fraudsters who will send an email with a false phone number that's and the email will say we know that wire fraud is a danger so call us Not scary. The, yeah. the consumer will call the fraudster who'll who will pose as a legitimate person in the transaction and and uh and get false wiring instructions so um i i think trust no one <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, no one who reaches you by email uh should be trusted in terms of wiring instructions and and wires yeah, that, that's great feedback. And it's just so scary how sophisticated they've become. Mm -hmm. um, you know, title companies are such an important partner to our members, but I want to know how we can be partners to you guys. What can realtors do to better partner with title companies through some of these changes right now? How can they be helpful? You know, it, it's um, the most important thing is good communication. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think, you know, different Realtors have different business models, um, and some of their business models may involve them getting a, something under contract and then moving on. Uh, maybe there's someone in their office that handles that. Maybe they like their title company to put all those pieces together. Um, I, I, there's more that we have to talk about right now, and, and there's nothing that's on autopilot. Um, yeah. So uh, really good communication with your escrow team is key. Um, we, we've put a bunch of tools in place to get us through these transactions and across the finish line. Um, but as I say, nothing's going to happen by autopilot. It, it's really going to take a conversation every step of the way. Yeah. Well, um, that's all the questions that I had. Is there anything that you would want to leave the members with? Let me just thank again, Independence Title for your support of ABOR, for your work in our, in our marketplace and in our business. 
I know that you're such an important partner to so many of our members. Anything you want to leave them with? Yeah. Um, I would say, you know, all the communication and information that we're putting out, we're really trying to stay positive. And, you know, there is a post Corona, uh, and, um, I think there's going to be some demand, a uh, pent up demand in the marketplace as people shelter in place, they're having thoughts about their shelter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, isn't it? We're all keenly aware of the downfalls of our homes now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yes. You see it in all of its awful detail. And, uh, you know, I think there'll be people who are really eager to, to reinvigorate their, their real estate goals. Um, and I think our challenge in, in both the title and, and the real estate industry is to stay positive for those consumers and keep encouraging them that there will be a new normal. Um, my hope is that we get back to the old normal in terms of home buying, uh, where people can do it in person versus some of the accommodations we're having to make now. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we'll all look forward to when we can physically connect again. But to your point, it is an important time to just stay connected to your client base, stay in conversation with them about what their goals are, because in many cases, those goals have not completely changed. They're just delayed in terms of their implementation. So exactly. we, we yeah, do believe that the market is still strong and that it will be even stronger when some of these, you know, when the box is opened up a little bit for us again. It's true. And, you know, for, for buyers and sellers, a lot of it is about you know, job insecurity. Um, mm -hmm. People are nervous and they don't know what they can count on right now. So a lot of people have pressed pause on their real estate goals, but, um, but that will change. So we, we I have agree. to be ready. I agree. Well, thank you so much, Kara. I hope you have a great day working from home and virtually. Yes. Um, appreciate your information always. And thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Indeed. Have a great day.